So here's our new Abbott's model engineering locomotive. It's a Saturn three, two and a quarter inch loco. I've just mocked it up at the moment because it's all unpainted apart from the chassis. And we've got all the other bits all the way down here. And I'm just gonna look for all the instructions and what's come in all the boxes. See how we put this all together and I will take you through it. Okay, so first up, I think we're going to get the axles, the wheels, and the axle boxes complete the springs onto the loco. I think that's probably the best place to start. And we've got this, if I can just pick it up, I can't it up. And then we've got that. And if you look over here, you might not quite be able to see it, but there's are some fittings that we need to fit that to. So, I think the best thing we can do, and they're all fitting in the room there. So the best thing to do is I am going to turn that loco over and start to trial fit all these. All the springs come there and we've got all those axle boxes in there. So let's turn that loco over and see what we get. By the way, before I flop this over, uh, it's quite easy to know which is the front and which is the back of this loco because here, if you can see it, there we go, that there is where the control box fits. So there'll be fittings for that to go to, which are all, let's just show you what's in here. Here we go, all the, all the electronics, so the buffers over here, and we've got the electrics instructions here. There are more the side panels, they're already pre-painted for me. And here, in here are the glass for the windows. So let's get started and get this thing turned over. Okay, so we've got the first wheel set mounted to the loco. As you can see, this is the axle box arrangement. I'll just pan around to the side. This is the unfinished one. Okay, now the, I had a little bit of uh, fun and games trying to work out how to mount the motor, but the actual motor here has a pair of lugs, has a pair of lugs, one there and one there. As you can see, they actually slot into that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all the bits I need for the next axle, and I will show you how we put all this together. Okay, so here's the second wheel set, and here's one of the axles. Now, the brass bushing goes towards the wheel set it'll just whoops it'll just press on but you have to actually lightly tap this into place with a mallet don't use a hammer because you could damage the axle box if you can get a rubber mallet the type that you use for camping then that will suffice okay so there we go that's the first axle box down and i'll just you can see the shaft there and where it comes to and if i come down here you see that brass bushing is touching the wheel. Now I'll just tap home the one on the other side and I'll show you what comes next. Okay, so the second axle set is in place. It does, it is a bit fiddly because you've got to get that into that slot and you've got to get that lug into there. So it is a bit fiddly. And if I just show over the top here, if it will focus for me. There we go, it's focusing now is that way around okay and over here put the lug into the slot there we go focusing now it's better um, it is a bit of a fiddly job to do um, but once you've got it in there the next thing is to put on are those springs which as you can see in the extra boxes i've got here oops they fit into those holes now when i was doing this it is a bit of a fiddly job to get them in but once you've got them in they fit onto there and you'll get them all on and once you've done that you fit this crossbar on top and I'll show you how to do that once I've got the springs on this one okay the springs are all set now next things are these bars that need to go on now you'll be given that bar in the kit and you'll be given a, a locking nut 
and a screw which is uh, the allen key type now the allen key I found that fits these is this one that's a 2.5 millimeter allen key and for the screw and for the nut because you'll need to hold it the smallest one of those now that's either a 6 or a 7 millimeter so I'm going to fit this on and I'm going to finish up these two axles because that, then that job is all done and then we'll come back okay so there we go that's all three wheel sets all on and that probably took me about half an hour to do all of that um, I've also put the couplings on on there and one there that's easy uh, buffers I've got one on again it's reasonably easy to, to sort that out I will show you the parts for that in just a second and also funny names I'm having this okay so I thought I'd ponder about the buffers for a bit and move on to the some of the electrics now this cable here is what connects to the controller and onto the handset and you have a bulkhead whoops have a bulkhead here which needs to go on now I couldn't remember whether it went on the outside or the inside of this section so I was lucky enough I actually picked up this loco from Abbott's so I managed to take some pictures of a loco under construction and as you can, whoops, and as you can see they've got the bulkhead positioned on the on the outside so that is what I'm going to do that back in there now with the kit you'll have all the screws you need to fit that on and obviously that there fits into the bulkhead into those oops, into those two screws so I'm going to fit this bulkhead on and then that's another another job done Okay, it's been a couple of days since we did any work. I just wanted to share what we've done with the electrical side of things. I got this uh, distribution box which will help tidy up the wiring from all these three motors. It would have been six wires otherwise coming through to the outside of the box. So we thought, right, okay, we'll do this. So all the wiring from the motors goes through this box, through fuses. Um, because of the wire length I had to do two, two of the motors in this side and one of the motors in this side so I've had to use both the connections out of here. So there's two positives out of there and the common negative out of there. So there's actually instead of six wires coming through we've got three wires, two live, one neutral and they'll go through and into the control box on the other side of the loco. I've finished this section as well that's all been done and sorted out you can see so next thing I need to do is make sure that there's nothing else I need to do underneath this loco and then I will turn it over and start wiring the electrics on the frame board okay we've moved on quite a bit now with the wiring I'll just take you through it so we have the relay board here almost got everything wired in there. These wires here control the engine start stop sound. These wires here connect onto the main controller. This wire here goes down to the hand controller. All this wiring here is all to do with the power. So we've got battery power, we've got uh, the motor power going down to the distribution board. The yellow wires control the sound of the motors uses 12 24 volt all the wiring as much as possible has been routed beneath the frame so this one up here is the same where the sound controls are here's the sound control board and the speaker as you can see as much as possible we've tried to route all the wiring down here all this wiring here is uh, we're going to wire up to the horns which are actually oops they're under the frame here which you can't see batteries are all hooked up as you can see I just need to tidy up the length of the wiring probably add some Anderson connectors and so on and I've just had the engine started in fact I think I have it still on so I think we will start the motors 
So down the hand controller, auxiliary one, to start. So there we go. I've actually had the loco up on chocks and all the motor wheels, axles, all working absolutely fine. So I will got to finish off the wiring in here to the horns, which will go through these panels here. Haven't got the lights yet, which would go through that one, but that's fine. Um, and that's about it, I think, at the moment. So I will carry on another uh, later on. Uh, with some more of the wiring finished. Okay, I thought I'd add this little bit onto the onto how I'm building this Saturn 3 Loco. The horns were causing me real fun and games. So thanks to Peter Abbotts, he's actually explained how these are wired together. So I thought I'd put this in the video to help other people. Standard 12 volt high and low um, horns. The other one is actually mounted under here where that nut is. Blue, blue is live, black is either, if you can call it earth or neutral, I suppose. And then I'll run those cables, uh, those wires, sorry, under the frame over to here. Now, the blue wire coming from that horn, you can see the other blue wire coming from the other horn there. The other one's going to come into here and then go into this 12 volt breaker. I'll tidy up this wiring later. And then into the relay box. Now here's the relay box. And this is what was causing me all the confusion. The first one, I'm going to get my finger in the shot. There we go, finger. The first one, that one there, is for engine start stop. The next two are for the high and low horns. As you can see, I've connected the right hand connectors with that small loop of black wire and the black wire coming from the horn is coming in and going to the other terminal. Now, if this will focus for me, there we go, the black wire on the left runs up and it actually connects here. Now, maybe that's not the right way to do it, maybe I could find somewhere bare metal on the chassis to connect to earth. This works for me um, so that is how I've wired that all together in there you can see the red one into 12 volt there as well and then this going over here that works for me and so I'm happy with that and just to prove the point I'll just switch the breakers on and that one they're both on and controller horn as you can see, one of the horns fully working. I'll just fire up the other one. I hope they're both fully working horns. That, I believe, completes all the wiring except for the lights, which I'm going to leave for the time being. And all I need to do is just tidy up the lengths of these wires. Some of them are a bit too long. Um, oh, can I just add very quickly, if you're stuck for a mounting point for these horns on one of these chassis, front there are already drilled holes they're slightly too small for the screws on top of the horns however I drilled these out to I think it was an eight millimeter drill and they fit perfectly and they fit perfectly one either side so if you get stuck there's an option for you <coughs> oh the other thing uh, which I thought I'd mention just in case people wondered these small wires here these are 22 gauge wires, okay. Battery wires are 10 gauge, and the motor wires, let's go up this end, the motor wires are 14 gauge, just in case you're wondering. Um, and all the different connectors, they're easy to find. I found all these connectors, to be honest with you. Let's go over here, there you go, look, absolutely loads of them. I got both of those and the Draper tool, all from Amazon. Um, easy, easy to locate, no problem getting those, and they're really, really cheap as well. 
So I just thought I'd add that because um, that's another learning curve I had was learning about what size wires are going where and so on. So there you go. Go. Done.